Coco. New York City, August. It's hot, muggy, and most of all, stinky. But here, in the home of one of the world's greatest fragrance houses, it is cool, dry, and most of all, it smells wonderful. Why does it smell so good? For the same reason that every product and fine fragrance you use smells good. Because master perfumers, scent evaluators, scientists, regulators, and hundreds of thousands of support staff are hard at work developing aromas that tickle our olfactory scents, create everlasting memories, and enhance our lives in ways we never realize. Consumers probably don't even realize how much of an inner change they have with fragrances on a regular basis. When I first came into this industry some 35 years ago, uh, I didn't know how a fragrance was made, didn't really even care. You probably use fragrance 10, 12 times a day. It brings back memories. It's in every aspect from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed and your entire environment is, is fragrance. Most people start off their morning by, you know, taking a shower, washing their hair, and shaving with another fragrance evolved, possibly an aftershave, another fragrance evolved, antiperspirant deodorant, another fragrance evolved, some cream lotion, another fragrance evolved. Every one of these products lend a certain level of pleasure to your day. The part of the nose that smells inside your nose is actually the only part of the brain that is in contact with the outside environment. So you actually smell with your brain directly. So people, for instance, have to know that when they smell a tomato or they smell a melon, eh, there's actually a little piece of that melon, a few molecules of that melon that are actually coming physically or going physically from that melon to the nose. Eh? People don't realize the art behind the product, not only the result, but the effort that goes into making it and the people who are making it who dedicate their lives in an artistic way to, to bring upon those creations that make everybody feel great, that bring memories to people, that, you know, make them happy. This is the story of fragrances. Just as art cannot exist without an artist, a fragrance cannot exist without a perfumer. I'm Mark Banmore, executive vice president for Bell May and in charge of international fragrance development. I've been with Bell May for 36 years now and have been in the fragrance industry for 51 years. I wanted to be an architect. Went to engineering school, ran out of money, needed a job, and I wound up getting a job as a lab technician for a fragrance company some 35 years ago. Actually, my father was a pharmacist, and he prepared his own compositions in fragrance and sold them in the pharmacy in a big can, you know, the tap, where people would fill their colognes and their... So that was his passion. And in some way, it got transmitted to me. You were still an apprentice, so... Uh, it was a very unusual time. I worked for these two European gentlemen that were really, really uh, very old world. And uh, they, t they taught me very well. My last training happened to be in flavor chemistry at uh, Procter & Gamble. And uh, the flavorist told me to go and interview with the perfumers. A very famous perfumer, Pierre Bourdon, told me from the very beginning, well, you know, Christophe, to become a perfumer, you have to be you have to learn at least for five years to start playing the piano, what we call the piano, all these ingredients that we use, the notes. And then he said it takes around 10 years to start being able to play. The first project that put me in the map was Polo by Ralph Lauren. And, and at the time I was a very young perfumer and I had no idea of the kind of success I was generating. But it was uh, an arduous uh, work, uh, an arduous development. It took, it took at least a year, if not more, hundreds of experiments. But uh, the result was unbelievable in the sense that it affected generations of, of, of young people. When a consumer product company or fine fragrance brand puts out a call for a fragrance, Perfumers compete to find the perfect scent for the client. Sometimes I'll see a color and I start to design in my head 
I, I bought a new golf shirt a couple of weeks ago, and it was really, a, I bought it because I really loved the color, and I started in my head designing a fragrance for that color. Every time you start a new project, it's like a, a wonderment, like a, a, a child with a, a new toy, you know? <laughs> so you, you get all excited. You have uh, one extreme where someone comes, says, well, I would like a scent for, for me, or for my brand, or for my space. You have an image of what, where you want to, what you want to achieve. But from having that image to achieving it takes sometimes a year or two of work. Sometimes we just give up on a fragrance because it's, it's just not moving in the direction yeah. that we like. It happens that many times you start on one vision and you realize it's not the right direction and you switch courses and you rethink it and then take another tack. You, know, you have a palette of 3,000 ingredients. If you're creating for, a, let's say, an air care product and you want to be commercial about it, usually in the neighborhood of 25 to 35 ingredients. When you're designing for toiletry products, that palette goes up significantly. Okay, and when you're designing for um, fine fragrances, it's, it's not unusual to have uh, upwards of 70 or 80 individual materials in there. So we had a client that actually sent us pictures, and they were trying to create a fragrance that would best uh, invoke the essence of George Clooney or Cary Grant. We would discuss like what, a, what fragrance type would really personify a George Clooney type of man who was alluring, who was sophisticated, who you really wanted to get to know. Maybe like if it was an oceanic note, if it was something like that was cool or refreshing, the customer had an emotion that they wanted to convey, and we needed to make it into a, a tangible fragrance juice, if you will. Nancy has an idea, I have an idea, we take a look at it, and then we really start to brainstorm taking a piece of this fragrance and a piece of this fragrance. My job, in essence, is to be the uh, liaison between the cut, what the customer wants and um, what the perfumer wants, if you will, and to kind of coax out from the perfumer what the customer really needs from a project. Most perfumers are temperamental and moody, so she has to kind of work with, you know, that kind of attitude and kind of bring out what this project needs. So she's at times my muse, she's my master, and everything in between in order to extract, you know, that creative essence to satisfy the client.